Are you struggling a bit with the PvP aspect in Hunt Showdown? Or are you just looking for a way to improve your gameplay in general? And then you've come to the right place. Because today we will be looking at everything there is to know about PvP in Hunt Showdown. For example, why is it a good thing that my teammate is hopping around here? Why do I go into the open to peek? Why is this guy bunny hopping out there? And why is it a bad thing for him to do, but a good thing for my teammate? Those are things that we will be looking at today. And those tips will help you whether you're a one star or a six star hunter. And the first topic is one of the most important. Also, it seems to be the easiest one, but it takes a lot of time to master. The crosshair placement. And actually, this is important in any shooter, not only Hunt Showdown. But what do I mean by that? Basically, you always want your crosshair to be placed in a way that you have to move your mouse as little as possible once you spot your opponent. Simply because the more you have to move your mouse to hit your opponent, the less accurate it is, the longer it takes, the more mistakes you can make. But how do we go about making that better? And furthermore, how do we master it? For starters, imagine you had a wall hack. Imagine, okay, very important. Now, how would you look around and pick the corner? Well, yeah, you would simply place your crosshair on your opponent already, then pick the corner and hit him right away. Now, for everybody else whose swing wasn't too close to the wall in their childhood and thus not cheating, we don't know in advance where the opponent is. So how do we do that? We will look at how to gain information of where our opponent is in a safe way. Now the chapter in a moment, but for now, let's just look at the crosshair placement. So just imagine we knew where he is. So we want to prepare our crosshair in a way that it will land near his head once we peek the corner so that we only have to do a micro adjustment to really hit him. Now, generally speaking, that means about head level and a bit to the side, so that we are more or less spot on once we pick the corner. With more and more map knowledge, you know also where are the corridors, where are the doors, and so on and so forth. But now the question is, and that takes a lot of practice, how do we do that? One method I like to do just for the first few rounds after not playing for a while is to take a silent pistol. I mean, yeah, the weapon is really great, Maybe with fanning, but with it you can shoot pretty much everything that is running around in Hunt Showdown. For example, zombies and other mobs without half the server knowing where you are. And now to the exercise. Look at where a zombie is. Then run to something that hides or blocks your vision. And then try to prepare the crosshair, pick the corner and try to land a headshot instantly or as fast as possible. Because basically... That is exactly what you will do against other hunters. And this is easily the most important step in becoming a better player on showdown. Because when you look at an exercise and an aim trainer, it is really easy. But a flick like this across the screen, super hard to do and even harder if it has to be fast. So really, cross air placement is king. Practice it. But now to the next topic. How do we get the information where our opponent is without him immediately killing us? Two things are very important here. One is speed, because, well, it keeps us alive. And the other one is the technique. What do I mean by speed? Basically, imagine our opponent already knows where we are. And he makes a clean crosshair placement. Meaning his crosshair is already placed exactly where our head would appear. So, if we just pick the corner we are most likely already dead. That's why we want to limit the amount of time in which we expose ourselves. The first option that we have is a so-called strafe. It's basically very short movements to the side, forth and back. But now to something funny. Our brain works in a very special way. When we see something, even for a fraction of a second, our brain is able to make a kind of photo and processes that afterwards. I'm actually going to prove this to you and we're going to do a little mini game. I'm going to show you a picture and I want you to click on the red balloon as fast as you can. And now a thumb up for everybody that actually took part in that. And now comes the funny part. I will show you another photo 
but this time only for a fraction of a second. And you will notice that you are still able to click on the red balloon. Here you go. So it probably took you the same amount of time to click on the red balloon with both photos, but on one photo, information was there only for a fraction of a second. And that's all you need. You don't need to have the information visually all the time. Because the processing part takes time anyway, and while this is happening, we don't want to expose ourselves. Because again, if the other player is holding the angle, we are most likely dead. Because the whole chain of events, it just takes too long. So we have to peek, look, process what we see, react, move the mouse, pull the trigger. It takes too long. Instead, we break this down into two steps. First, we want to find out where he is and then prepare a crosshair accordingly before we peek again and shoot him. Meaning, we strafe, give ourselves time to process the information and this is where the bunny hopping comes in. It is something many people do, especially at 5-6 stars. And what this is supposed to do is to lower the chance of getting a headshot. If our opponent has a very, very good reaction time, he will still be able to react if we strafe out, even if we do it quickly. This bouncing is supposed to move our heads out of the line of fire, so that in the worst case, we only get a body hit. Now it's supposed to keep us alive, basically. And this is the technique. But that's basically how we want to gather information. We really want to keep the time in which we expose ourselves to an absolute minimum. And with the gathered information, we process and prepare ourselves before we peak again and then again. Keep the time that we are exposed ourselves at an absolute minimum. That's where crosshair placement comes in. Now, how do we practice that? For this purpose, the so-called trials are a pretty good choice. There are certain horde modes that do this excellently. Now, try to do this jump peak to identify where the zombie is. Then in cover, prepare a crosshair peek the corner, land the headshot. And that already simulates pretty much what you will encounter on 5 to 6 stars in terms of PvP. And if you master that, I guarantee you, you will climb those stars pretty fast. So really, always keep moving, keep the time that you expose yourself to an absolute minimum. And the speed is of course completely up to you. And depends on how much experience you bring in from other shooters or other games and many other factors. But the technique is always the same. Now, of course, there are also situations where you just stand still. For example, in a house, because you don't have to worry that somebody's gonna shoot you through a wall. Or at least in most cases. But outside, you really want to keep moving and do a lot of jump peaks around corners. Now, you don't want to jump around all the time because, well, you're gonna piss off <laughs> your teammates if you just constantly keep jumping. But around corners and in, in the middle of fights, you really want to use this technique. But speaking about being in a building, there's of course the other situation. What if you are in a house, for example, you aim at the door and someone tries to push you? First, of course, crosshair placement. So your crosshair should be placed at where you expect your opponent to show up. It's where you only have to pull the trigger. But if you now see that he is making a jump peek and you miss, just hit the body shot, what should you do now? It's very important that you reposition yourself minimally now, because if he's a good player, he now knows where you are, he will do crosshair placement, pick the corner, pre-fire you, and you're dead. But if you change your position, it forces him to move his mouse again, or miss the shot, which gives you time to pull the trigger again, and probably win the fight. And those are already the most important basics. There are a ton of more topics that we could go into, like how do you isolate fights in a 2v3, 1v3, how do we gather intel with, for example, the new beetle and so on, but those will be in future videos. So, if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up, as it really helps the channel, so thanks for the support. If you have questions, drop them in the comment section down below, I'm actually reading those. And other, other than that, if you really like the channel and you want to support me and help cover the expenses for things like music rights, animations and stock footage that I use in my videos, consider becoming a channel member. Or if you have one lying around, eat a Twitch Prime. <laughs> Thanks a ton and take care.